Hi, and welcome to the digital control design video with PSIN. We're going to go over uh, designing a voltage mode controller for this buck converter in the S domain and then converting that into the Z domain. Right now, this is set up to run from 50 volts and we'll have a 25 volt output. Uh, it's running at a constant 50% duty cycle right now. And uh, we can see the response with this simulation. So there it is, there's the output voltage. There's a bit of overshoot and hit then hitting uh, 25 volts. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the uh, open loop transfer function for this uh, circuit. And to do that, I'm going to go into the elements menu. In other, and in probes, we'll find an AC sweep probe. Also in the elements menu, under other, there's an AC sweep file. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to set up a perturbation in my reference. To do that, I'm going to take a summer circuit from the bottom, and then I'm going to put in a sinusoidal voltage source. Now that that's all hooked up, we can then set up the AC sweep. So the switching frequency is 20 kHz, so I think I'll start a little bit lower. I'll start at 50 Hz. End frequency, 10 kHz, that's okay. Number of points, 51, I'm okay with that. Flag for points. Zero means that the points will be logarithmic spacing. A flag of one will mean that they will have a linear spacing. The source name, I'll change the source name to V sweep. Now it's important that the source name matches my perturbation source. The start and end amplitude for the AC sweep need to be about 5 to 10 percent of the reference voltage. The other parameters of the sine wave uh, voltage source uh, we don't really need to worry about right now. The AC sweep will automatically change these as it sweeps through the different frequencies. So we're all set up to run here. So I'm just going to simulate this now. So here are the AC sweep results. We have the gain and phase plots. I'm going to use these plots now with Smart Control to design my controllers. If you do not have Smart Control, you can use different software packages. These files are, are savable in different file formats, so text files or comma-separated files, so that you can import them into other packages to help you do your controller design. I'm going to use Smart Control. So I'm going to launch Smart Control now and uh, design my controllers. We're not going to cover the use of Smart Control in this video. Uh, you can uh, look on the website for other information on how to use Smart Control and we'll release another video in the future that covers the use of Smart Control. But I'll pick the video back up again when I have my controllers designed. So this is the output from Smart Control. I have a Type 3 controller and I have a limiter. The parameters get outputted into this parameter file. And so we can see here that I've designed a crossover frequency of 6 kilohertz, and we're switching at 20 kHz, and these are the gains of my controller here. So what we can do now is we can simulate this. And here we can see it comes nicely with no overshoot to 25 volts and settles out quickly. So what we can do now is we can mimic what will happen when we digitize it by adding some delays to the circuit. Those can be found in the other function blocks of the control menu. So I will place one of the blocks here and I will define the time delay is 1 over the sampling frequency. And let's see what happens now. Ah, hasn't worked. So it looks like my controller, I can't just simply design in the, in the S domain and then import it directly into the Z domain. It seems like I'm going to have to redesign my controller with the delay accounted for. So I'll go back into Smart Control and deal with that and catch up with you after I've done the redesign.
So I've redesigned my controller with Smart Control and I have new gains. I've reduced the crossover frequency to 1 kilohertz from 6 kilohertz. So I've slowed everything right down to take into account of that delay that is going to happen when we digitize. So now when I run the simulation we can see that we're not overshooting and we're rising nicely to 25 volts. And this is the modulation waveform, which gets compared with the carrier wave. So we can see that things are behaving nicely. It's not as fast as the 6 kilohertz one was, but now that we have to account for that delay, we have to sacrifice that speed that we had. So the next thing I'm going to do, replace my S domain components with Z domain components. Now, to convert my S domain controller into the Z domain, I need to first look to see what the transfer function of my Type 3 controller is. And here it is. So we can see that if we multiply all this out, we'll get a third order S domain transfer function. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the S to Z converter, and I'm going to select a general third order transfer function and I'm going to then use this utility to get my coefficients for an S domain transfer function. Now what are the coefficients? Helpfully I've already done a little bit of math here and I've worked out uh, what my coefficients need to be so all I need to do is copy and paste them into the parameter fields. Okay, now that I've got all my parameters into the S to Z converter, I can hit convert and I'll get my equivalent Z domain transfer function. So what I'm going to do with those is just copy those and bring them over and throw them into my parameter file. I'm also going to add another one here, A0, and I'm going to find that as 1. Okay, so I'm going to go into the elements menu, into digital control, and I'm going to take the Z domain transfer function. I'm going to place that. So we can see here that it's going to be a third order, and my coefficients are just going to merely be the ones that I just converted with the S to Z converter. And I'll just fill those in now. So now that I've filled all those out, I can replace this block with my Z domain block. And I can replace this block with my unit delay block. Additionally, I need to put in a zero order hold block. Now that we've successfully converted our S domain circuit into uh, the Z domain, we can simulate. And here we can see that it's behaving as the estimate uh, function did. We can add the modulation signal. And you can see that it's behaving nicely as well. So we've successfully designed our digital controller now to account for the delay that happens when you digitize circuits. We can implement our control solution confidently on a DSP and be sure that we will get 25 volt output and that will behave appropriately. Thank you so much for watching and check back often to the website for more tutorial videos.